Linux still has this weird reputation of requiring the command line to do a lot of things. And this is factually wrong. Whether you use GNOME or KDE or another desktop environment, you have everything you need graphically. At least if you're a regular user and everything goes smoothly. But as long as you start going into system administration, advanced configuration or debugging, you start to notice that maybe you do need the command line after all. So today we're going to look into the graphical gap between Windows and Linux, what we're still missing, what you need a third party tool to do, and what we could do better than Windows. And add this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Safings Portmaster. Portmaster is an all-in-one tool to easily take your privacy to the next level. And it's a tool I use myself on all of my Linux devices. Portmaster lets you automatically block all trackers and malware in every application you run on your computer. Not just your web browser, but everything you run. It's easy to use with defaults already in place that lets you just set it and forget it. But if you like to configure every rule and every app, you also can. Portmaster is completely free and open source and also free of charge as it's funded by users that subscribe to the SPN, a super powered VPN that gives you multiple identities for every connection of every application. So if you want to easily improve the privacy of your system, whatever the Linux distro you use or even on Windows, click the link in the description below and download the Portmaster for free. The first thing Windows users might be used to is the device manager. This thing basically lets you see all the components on your PC and the devices plugged into it. It lets you check for drivers, fix various problems, set some options and view some logs related to your devices. And it's generally a very useful tool to identify a problem with any of your hardware, which is very handy on Windows because, you know, it's Windows. On Linux, this thing has no equivalent. We do have a third party app called Hard Info but it just lets you view the peripherals and devices and get some details, but it's not an actionable application. There's no disabling a device, no options, no logs. In KDE, you have the same thing with the info center provided as part of your desktop, but you can also just view devices. You don't have access to any configuration or action, and the output is not formatted in a very legible way. And that's a shame because there is a lot of stuff that we could do to make it easier for users to identify a hardware issue, which would also make the life of people answering their questions in forums a lot easier. Now, first you could link that tool with driver support, right click on your Nvidia GPU, select drivers and launch the install of the best driver possible for that GPU. You could also have access to various logs to show if the device was detected properly, if the driver has been loaded. You could access a few options. For example, for an AMD GPU, I personally had to figure out that I needed to put my Radeon RX 6650 XT in 3D full screen mode instead of the low power mode that it defaulted to. I had to look online for hours to find how to do it. Having a graphical setting immediately visible in a device manager would have made this a lot easier. I had to look for the solution, find it, edit the config file manually, create a script to automate that setting at each reboot, and then launch that script creating a systemd service. Not exactly user-friendly for something that you should be able to configure in one click in a graphical interface. It could also help tailor Bluetooth settings for specific peripherals, like disabling suspend for a keyboard or reducing the latency for a Bluetooth controller. You can do all of that using the command line and editing config files that behave differently depending on the distro, which sucks to be frank. Device Manager is a very useful tool on Windows and I really wish we had that on Linux. It would make life much easier. Now Linux runs services in the background for printing, Bluetooth, network, virtualization, the graphical server or compositor and a lot more things, generally managed by systemd on most distros. And now you can insert your ooh system D comment down below. And almost no Linux desktop has a graphical user interface to manage these services, turn them on or off, enable one at startup or not, or view logs related to this service. On GNOME, you have an extension called system D manager, which lets you start and stop services at will, but no way to configure them or select options or enable auto start. 
You also have Check Service, an N cursors terminal app that is pretty cryptic if you're used to graphical programs. On KDE, you have a services page in the settings, but you can basically just start and stop them. No other action is available. As far as I know, only OpenSUSE has a decent services manager that is baked into Yast, their configuration tool. And brace yourself, because this is going to be a recurring theme throughout the video. Now, this OpenSUSE tool lets you view logs for all services, view the details to know what they do, select when they start or not, and even select if you want to boot your device in a graphical mode or not. On Windows, the services app might look like it's 20 years old, which it probably is, but it lets you start and stop services, select if you want to start them manually or at boot, or completely disable them. And it lets you set policies for various services failures, like restarting the computer, restarting the service, or opening another program. This is something our graphical desktops all need. A lot of people will never care about it, but for people who do, having a graphical app is way easier than figuring out how system CTL and each service works. Another thing that is not entirely available in our desktop environments is a graphical tool to configure the firewall and general system security. KDE has a config module in their settings, so that's handled. It's easy enough to use and create rules, enable or disable the firewall, it just works. And yet again, OpenSUSE has a firewall config tool in Yast, which works really well. Although as all Yast modules, this isn't really a looker, which for a tool like this doesn't really matter, so I'll stop nitpicking. For GNOME, there are third-party tools you can install, depending on the firewall the distro uses, like firewall config for firewall D. But these are rarely provided by default, which is a shame because if you ship your distro with a firewall enabled, you probably should also have a graphical app to configure it. And of course, installing a third-party app when you need it is not very difficult, but GNOME should definitely have a config page for the firewall that follows their own guidelines and interface. It's better. Linux desktops also don't have an equivalent to the Windows Security Center with a quick rundown of what is enabled, disabled, and potential threats to your system. Of course, an antivirus doesn't make much sense for most Linux users, unless you regularly send files you got off the internet to your friends on Windows. Now, GNOME has the basics of such an implementation with their device security page, with a list of things that might or might not be secure on your device, but they're not actionable. You can't really do anything from there, apart from sadly realizing that your PC is just not secure. Look at that sad score, zero. And that's not even better on any of my other computers. Anyway, here we could add some information, depending on certain libraries, apps, and kernels we use if vulnerabilities have been detected and aren't patched yet. We could have access to the firewall settings, maybe even see background apps on X11 that could capture every keystroke, apps that have permissions that feel incorrect, maybe even have a status of your dependencies from your package manager and a one-click button to try and repair them if they're broken. And we could even implement the constant notifications that Windows Security Center always pops up on your desktop. Oh wait, no, we, we really don't need that. No one implement that. Put the keyboard down, Kevin. And then we have backups. A lot of distros ship with a third-party backup tool like DejaDub or Timeshift. But first, they generally only ship one or the other, and both have different purposes. One is for your slash home files, the other is for your system itself. We sort of need a complete solution that works ideally for both. And they're third-party tools, which means system integration is minimal. What I think we need is to right-click on a file in the file manager and have a versions menu item that automatically shows all the backed up versions of that file and lets me view them in real time with the right app and select the one I want to restore. What I would like is a system settings option native to the desktop environment that lets me configure a backup and restore from there. Even Windows has that, but it's pretty clunky though, so maybe we should take inspiration from Time Machine from macOS instead. This would be insanely useful. We do have third-party solutions, but they're really not that fantastic right now. Okay, now let's talk about the registry. Yeah, I'm going there. The Windows registry is a horrible, horrible thing. 
it's illegible, it's super messy, modifications can result in a horrendously broken system, and generally it's better left alone. So why talk about it? Well, because while the implementation of the registry in Windows is really, really bad, it does surface a lot of options for applications and the system, and not all Linux desktops have an equivalent. GNOME has dconf, which has a lot of various settings you can tweak. I've even made a dedicated video about a few of them. The link is in the description. KDE doesn't have that. You get a lot of settings graphically in the system settings, but you also can't change everything in there. And so additional changes have to be made in the text config files themselves, especially for system related settings. And that's where OpenSUSE comes in again. Yas has a bunch of additional configurations available graphically, from fonts to the display manager, the window manager, advanced network configuration, managing file systems. It has a bunch of options that are usually pretty tough to find. And not just options for the desktop itself, but options for the whole system. A graphical tool for this, native to the desktop environment, would probably be very appreciated by systems administrators that need to deploy the exact same configuration on all workstations. Which takes us back to the command line. And look, it's awesome, it's fast, it's powerful. You can get the output of a program and pass it to another to really find what you're looking for. It's the most powerful way to interact with your system. But you need to know the commands. Setting the options for a device, like a GPU, you need to know there's a config file for that and where it is. You want to change the options for a system D service. You need to find the command to interact with it, then find the service name, then find the possible options. If you don't know the command or the location of the file, you will need to look online. When having a graphical user interface would let you just look it up in your computer by yourself, and I would argue would also teach you way more about the system you're using than relying on copy-pasting a command line you found in a forum. And even for seasoned systems administrator, what they know is generally only applicable to one distro. It might be completely different in another. So yeah, there's still a graphical gap between Windows and Linux. And ironically, this gap isn't really visible for the regular user because it's more a problem for advanced users and system administrators. And you might argue these people would just use the command line because they know how to use the command line, because they had to learn how to use it, because they had no choice. There was no other way to do what they wanted to do. I think it's important to have graphical tools for all of this for everyone. And I think it's important that I tell you about our sponsor. If you've already been confronted with hardware issues on Linux, you might be dreading your next computer purchase. You don't know if everything is gonna work. Well, I have the solution. Click the link in the description below and buy a device from Tuxedo. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box. All the components are picked specifically to work really well with Linux. They have a huge range of devices that will suit every need and every price point, from the smallest, most affordable laptop to the highest tower workstation or something for gaming. They have it all. All the devices are super configurable before the purchase. You can even customize them with your own logo or your own keyboard layout. And all their laptops are openable, upgradable, and repairable, including the SSD, the RAM, the battery, and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you're putting off your next purchase because you're afraid your next computer might not work well with your setup, stop wondering, click the link in the description below and get yourself a Tuxedo PC. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications or to write a comment. And if you didn't like the video, there's always that thumbs down button and you can always tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, I left plenty of links in the description below for LibraPay, Patreon, YouTube memberships, YouTube thanks, PayPal. You know how this works. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!